Let's create a loop of tank treads in a way that could be quickly animated using MASH. So here is the 30 second answer that all the other MASH tank track tutorials cover. Be in a brand new scene, create a brand new primitive, add a simple track shape, go to MASH, Network, Add Curve Node, Add your curve, increase the step of the curve, reduce the distribute tab distance to zero and increase the number of points to fit and edit the curve animation speed hit play and you've got yourself an animated tank track the chances are that you're not in a new scene and you're not using a fresh primitive tread your track could not be clicked out of the create menu onto the grid fully formed and that your beautiful tank track did not attach in any way so this took me hours to get working properly the first time round with a good looking mesh like this. So hopefully this tutorial can explain it to you in a few minutes. So first, get your tank track. It obviously needs to be a design that tessellates like this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want a tutorial on how to make this. Make sure that it's at the scale that you need it at. So check the scale compared to the wheels. Make sure that any joining sections like this are forgiving with the sections being taller than the geometry that they must join with, with plenty of space to shift back and forth like this. Keep your actual treads as short as possible to avoid protrusion like this on tight corners. If you want real weld accuracy, you'll either need to parent it like this, I have a video on how to pair it in the description below or follow a fully fledged rigged animation tutorial which would take about half an hour. Mash animations are just a quick fix. Let's create our curve. To make sure that your entire scene behaves like mine, spacebar to your side view X and this tank that one of my students made is facing to the left in this view here. Go to create curve tools CV curve tool. Start from the second wheel to the front if I were you and create a point in between, then a point on the base of the next wheel along and then a point quite close after that. You should see your curves path click after the fourth point has been drawn. You may want to go to shading and x-ray to see through your geometry. Ensure some breathing room between the wheels and your tread, especially on the small wheel at the top and go all the way around and when you get to the wheel that's next to the one that you started on, go to your cursor tool or click Q to quit that and go to curves at the top. If you're in the modeling part of Maya curves, open slash close and it will finish joining that up for you. If you've made a mistake and you'd like to modify this path, very carefully and accurately right click and hold on it and go to control vertex. Be sure that you do this over an area where you can see the background of Maya rather than over geometry as it prioritizes your geometry over curves. And you can then do W for move and treat these just like vertices on geometry and maybe space them out to make sure that your corners are as soft as possible. And the softer the corners are, the less glitch you'll see during the animation. When you're done, go back to your cursor tool or go to right click object mode. You can now spacebar back to your 3D view and with the curve still selected, hit W to move it into position. You'll see that you need to uh, go to center pivot from your poly modeling tab, which is this blue button here. As you can see, mine's glitched out for some reason. I'm just gonna do R for resize and just flatten that back out to there. Now let's do some pre-flight checks. This bit will seem boring, but each step represents an hour of my life getting it wrong and then trying to figure it out. So check one, you need to have never frozen your transformations or combined your geometry in history. If you have, like me, then you're in trouble and you're gonna need to fix it. So if you have either combined it or done freeze transformations, go to your channel box layer editor and just know that all of these numbers that you see over here should point to the center of your Maya grid rather than the last place that you froze transformations. Transformations. So obviously when you do freeze transformations, to, which you often do as a modeler to prevent errors, all of these get reset to zero and your geometry now treats this point that you just froze transformations as its point of origin rather than the scene. This is the first problem that will completely mess up this process. To overcome this, first of all, you're going to need to center pivot. So that's this button here, the blue button on your shelf. And once you've centered pivot, you should go to modify bake pivot. Now 
you're gonna need to find the center of your grid and move your geometry to it. I've been working in this scene at a scale of meters because this is intended for computer games and which also solves weird camera issues with zooming in and out. To align this to the center of your grid, find the center of your grid, Mine's really small, obviously, because of the scale I'm working at. And hold X for X-ray on the keyboard and then click and hold on the small circle in the middle of your geometry and drag it up to the exact center of your grid. I'm going to hit four on the keyboard to look through my geometry to make sure I've done this perfectly. So that's X and make sure you snap exactly to the middle of the grid in every axis like I've done here. I'm now going to hit five, six, seven. You must now go to freeze transformations, which is this snowflake or modify freeze transformations. You can now move it anywhere you like, as long as you don't hit freeze transformations again, or try and combine it in, or separate it in any way. All of these numbers on the attribute editor now point towards the center of your Maya scene rather than anywhere else. Check two, in any scene I make with a curve drawn in side view X, I must position my geometry like this, look at the compass down here, with the front of my tread facing in the X plus direction, the outside part of the tread, which would contact the ground, facing in the minus or negative Z direction. If at a later stage, when you attach your treads to the curve and they come out rather hilariously like this, you need to just work out what you need to do to rotate them back. So although you can't rotate these once they're on the line, even if you try to use the rotate options, they don't seem to do a single thing. You could just get your duplicate back in and just plan it out so that you would have to rotate take the face that contacts the floor 90 degrees clockwise, you'd have to then rotate the face at the front 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Those are the two steps that you need to write down on a piece of paper that you would then apply to the geometry. So you would then hit undo several times until your geometry goes back to where it was and then do those two steps to it which for me was to rotate the face that contacts the floor 90 degrees clockwise, rotate the face at the front 90 degrees anti-clockwise, and repeat the mash process again from this new orientation. Check three, for this to work, you must have your Maya scene units set to centimeters. To do this, go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, settings and make sure that your working units are set to centimeter. I usually work in meters, which is why I had so much trouble. So once they're in centimeters, hit save. Now duplicate your tank track with control D and move it somewhere out of the way for now. And now save your work. Once you attach this to the curve, MASH won't give your geometry back and most attempts to do so result in Maya crashing. So duplicate it and save it. And so now finally for the fun bit that you can find in all the other videos on YouTube. With your tank shred selected, it can be anywhere you like, go to the MASH menu. If MASH doesn't appear in your menu, go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, go to near the bottom and you'll see a section that says MASH.MLL or just type in MASH at the top and make sure it says loaded and auto load. First, bring up the MASH editor, which is this button here with the tabs. Next, bring up your outliner, which is this button on the left. It might be a good idea to select your curve on the left over here and just rename it, preferably with underscores. Now, select your tank tread and click on this button here at the left of the MASH menu. Your tank tread will then snap back to the center of Maya over here. And you may see that there's several of them all in the, all in the same place or stretched across your scene. Because the scale of my scene is so small, they're all very close together over here. If it looks different to mine, don't worry, just do this. Click on the, in the mash editor on the section that says mash and click and hold on the curve and let go on add curve node. You'll now see a mash curve node appear in here. Click on that. On the right hand side, you'll see an empty area for you to drag your curve from your outliner into. To move objects in the outliner, you have to middle click. So I'm going to middle click and hold on my tank tread curve, middle click and hold and drag this curve out from your outliner and let go in there with middle click. So that's middle click and drag. You'll then see your treads appearing on the curve like this. It's starting to look quite good. Next, while you're in the curve section, increase the step to the max all the way to one. You'll see that your tr treads are evenly distributed around like this. Now go to the tab that says mash distribute and reduce the distance down 
like this. The chances are that in your scene, these are flying quite far off of your curve. So dragging the distance down to the left will solve that issue. And because my scene's so big, that doesn't have as much of an effect. Now increase the number of points until the tank treads start to mesh together nicely. Zoom in and check that the number of points is set so that the treads connect in a realistic way. Pay extra close attention to the sharpest point on your curve like this area here. You can see why it's important for your geometry to be forgiving in the connecting areas as it does stick up a little bit it doesn't exactly connect perfectly. Notice that on the corners, the distribution or the gaps in between are wider than they are at the top. So watch out for that. Okay, and you can now close your outliner and check out what you've made. How cool is that? So with hardly any effort, you've now been able to create a pretty realistic looking tank track. But wait, there's more. If you go to your mash curve from your mash editor here and just hit the play button down at the bottom of Maya, you'll see that it's actually animated already like this. We can increase the animation speed by going to the Mash 2 Curve section, which if it's disappeared, click from your Mash Editor, Mash 2 Curve, and increase the animation speed all the way up to 1. Since my scene is a large scene, I'm going to have to overdrive this value. So I'm going to type in a value of 5 and hit Enter and I'm gonna check this out, much better. However, it's going the wrong way. I wanted to show you this intentionally so that you can know that you can just do this if you just hit stop in Maya and change the animation speed to negative five or whatever value you felt was a good speed and then hit play. And it obviously goes that direction as well. And this will loop forever. If you're continuing to model or edit your scene, I do recommend you hit stop. And to move this around, I would recommend not moving this by clicking on the actual geometry of the tank tread, but rather finding the little curve inside, which you should see in between the gaps of your tank tread. Or if you cannot see it, then add your tank treads to a new layer by going to your channel box layer editor along the side here, creating a new layer and with the object on, which is this one here and simply setting it to T for template. This means you can easily click on the curve and right click, go to control vertex without any issue. What's really good is you can even modify the shape of the curve after you've attached the treads and modify it. So if you want to have the top bit sagging down slightly, you can, you can do absolutely anything you want. It's really good. And to move it, simply go back to object mode and move the curve itself like this. To get this back out of template mode, just click on the T and change it away from the R to nothing and you'll be absolutely fine. So you can see I might just need to modify the position of the wheels on my tank, but it looks pretty good. If you can't see the pivot as you're trying to move your tank tread around, it just means that you need to stop your animation and then the pivot will come back. But that's looking um, absolutely awesome. To duplicate this, you can't just get your curve and do Control D, that will just duplicate the curve. Nor can you just click on the geometry and duplicate that. If you go to center pivot, I've put it on my shelf here. Once you duplicate it with control D, it just leaves a preserved form like this, which may be useful for modelers. But if you want to have both treads animated, you simply click on the geometry and go to edit, duplicate specials options box. And in the duplicate special options, make sure that you have duplicate input graph ticked. And then you can hit duplicate special. You'll see now in your mash editor, another mash node series has appeared and you can move the tread away. To move it away, you have to again, click on the curve and move it with that. So to duplicate it, you click on the geometry. To move it, you always use the curve and you can pop that to the other side of your tank and check it out. You'll notice that now there's two of them, your computer will lag. Once it's buffered out though, it should smooth right up. To make your wheels spin infinitely, simply go to your channel box layer editor on the right after selecting a wheel. Rotate the wheel ever so slightly in its axis and see which number is going wild. And then right click on that number and go to key selected. Move your time slider to as far as you need it from to make a complete loop. I'm just gonna say mine is 20 and change the rotate value to something like 359 degrees and hit enter and then immediately right click key selected. Your wheel will now spin. You may notice that it accelerates and then decelerates. To stop this from happening, go to windows, animation editors, graph editor, drag select both of your points and click on the straight line linear tangents button from the shelf. Now go to curves, post infinity, 
and do cycle with offset. Now, when you hit the play button, you'll see that your wheel will turn forever. To increase or decrease the speed of its turn, you can close this down now and simply hold shift while dragging over the right hand keyframe and move it to the right to slow the speed down or to the left to speed it up. I found that moving mine to the right to about 70 seems to have the right speed. Obviously make sure that you've centered pivot before doing that, otherwise it'll rotate in a really weird way. Now, depending what year it currently is, you may have difficulty exporting your MASH animation into something directly like a game engine or into Sketchfab. So I'd recommend using a proper rigged method for those things or simply selecting your treads and going to edit, delete by type, history and then they will be locked in time but will export perfectly into an fbx file and be careful if at any point in the future even if without these selected you go to edit delete all by type history you will destroy the animation that you've worked so hard to create here so in the future now go to delete by type history and select specific items to delete the history on i hope this helps and i'd love it if you left a comment with a link to whatever image or sketchfab file you end up making after following this tutorial i'd love to see what tank you made likewise if it did not work pop your file onto a google drive set it to anyone with the link can view and comment the link here and i will take a look if you're making a tank you may need to follow my machine gun bullet and belt tutorial here or for more quick mire tips and fixes in your feed subscribe here